Welcome to F and W Game Club. We're continuing to cover uh, E three. Technically, E three doesn't start until Tuesday, but a lot of companies like to get out with their information early so they have the spotlight. EA uh, did the press conference today, but also there's some other games coming out, including this one. I guess it's called Vampire, based on its spelling. I want to call it Vampire, but it's a uh, vampire with a V A M P Y R. Uh, it is developed by Don't Nod, um, who have recently become pretty popular because of their Life is Strange series. Uh, this game looks like it has a ton of promise. Chris, how awesome was this game? This looks pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, it, it's exciting to see a new IP that I actually want to play. <laughs> Early 20th century Grand Theft Auto vampire game. There it is, yeah. Right. Uh, early 20th century London atmosphere uh, environment. It's... Um, it's uh, explained to be an action RPG vampire game. Now, it's not one thing that said it's a semi-open world. Semi-open world. That's You know what I'm thinking? I'm getting a strong sense of Dishonored 2 in yeah. this. And I bet it's going to be very much like that. Like probably a bunch of sub, or not sub, but a open a hub, world. hub worlds. A bunch of hubs that you could go to. Maybe Thief a little bit. Yeah, Thief. And... Uh, I'm liking it a lot. There's a lot of interesting things in this trailer that I'd like to go over. Um, first of all, uh, if, if you skip ahead to when the woman's talking, we'll see this conversation trees. So, we, you know, conversation trees are sort of the next big thing and games are appearing everywhere. Sometimes they matter. Sometimes they're just there so you can kind of control how sarcastic or how genuine your character is or whatever. But some what conversation trees also suggest is if they're done right, they can affect the story. So we might have some story branching here from this game. We don't know this for a fact. I'm just um, theorizing based on the early footage here. It should be noted, by the way, that this is pre-alpha footage, which means uh, this looks really good considering. Usually pre-alpha footage looks pretty bad. I kind of feel like people are calling things pre-alpha that aren't really pre-alpha. <laughs> yeah, they, uh, right. of course, this could be a vertical slice. It could be the rest. It could be that the rest of the game is in shambles right now. <laughs> uh, what was that game uh, made by um, uh, the people from Borderlands? What's the Borderlands developer? I don't remember. Oh well, uh, uh, Gearbox. Gearbox. Remember when they were showing off their Aliens game, not Isolation, but the other one, and. Mm. Uh, it kept on looking so good, so good, so good. But when it came out, the whole thing was a hot mess. You know, you never know with these vertical slices what you're really getting. But this game does look pretty good. Um, the main character, his name is Jonathan. He's a vampire. Uh, the the um, game makes a big deal. This, this pre-alpha footage, this demo makes a big deal that he's struggling between his human self and his vampire self. Um uh, what do you think about that sort of storytelling, Chris, that possibility? I think it's kind of boring for vampires. Right? Yeah? It's been done a lot of times it's with vampires. It's to Anne Rice for you? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, let's let's do something new. How about someone who just, just enjoys being a vampire? Yeah, just like really likes sucking blood? Yeah. It's Having just a good like, time. They're like, look, I'm going to live forever. This is awesome. Yeah, and he like just licks his lips for a minute yeah. and just, just thinks on how great his life is. Yeah. And then we go on and do more vampire stuff. And then he steals a Model T and tries to jump it through a billboard. <laughs> <laughs> uh, th there's some religion in this uh, uh, by the way <laughs> uh, why don't you skip ahead to the end i want to um talk about we we're talking about his vampire struggle i want to go to where he's go back not quite that far um to when he's hunting the guy so he listens to a conversation between two men he can tell with his vampire senses that um s some of them are healthy some of them are sick with a yeah, plague right and i believe he picks the one that's healthy so that's an interesting thing you probably need to pick healthier blood right i would think so 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 instead of going after the sickly guy where you could kind of create some kind of story where like he's gonna die anyway no go after the healthy guy yeah you want the good blood so he hunts him down uh he confronts him he tells him he has something he has to show him you can skip ahead to when they go to the next space and I was pretty surprised to see this because it was right in your face. It was sort of non-apologetic. Uh, there it is, I think. He just takes the guy that uh, he's lured into a dark area. He's and making him come with him. He makes him go with him, first of all. It's very abusive, in a sense. <laughs> very controlling. And once nobody's looking, uh, he's going to suck his blood. And uh, there was like no great story 
reason for this. They didn't justify it by like, oh, he's a bad guy and he needs to be taken out or anything like that. This is just your need as a vampire to hunt and kill. Those teeth do look a little pre-alpha, don't they? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, my teeth are pre-alpha right now. <laughs> I haven't gotten my full my full teeth. Um, and uh, go ahead to the fighting because the bl- <laughs> it's more than ju- <laughs> it's more than ju- his teeth look better than the vampire's <laughs> teeth. Go to the fighting. Show uh, where he in during a combat scene. Um, he drinks. You drink the blood of one of the people you're fighting with. And we see that this isn't just for story. It's also part of the combat mechanic that the character needs uh, it to power up a gauge. So here we go. We're about to, I think, a little, up, a little more, a little more getting there. There we go. Yeah, so he's in this combat. fight. Uh, y- it's a woman, I believe, that you kind of you knock teleport around. around. That's pretty cool. Yeah, teleporting around using your super vampire powers and sucks the blood. And look at the gauge, the orange gauge on the top left. Every time you use some vampire powers, it goes down, but it refills a little bit. But he needs a big boost. So in just a moment here, he's going to suck the blood of one of these people finding him. And it's one of those things you keep waiting for it, waiting for it. There it is. Sucking the blood fills the gauge, which allows you to then do this. Let you see this right here. Here comes the blood rage powers. He's a Krogan. (laughs) There you go. Blood, some kind of blood related impales him. powers impales him, kills him. Um, and so what I'm, what I'm, the point I'm making here is this need to drink blood is not only a story um, artifact. It's also part of gameplay mechanic. I like it when story and gameplay meet. Uh, this is, that's a clue that this is a well thought out game, that it's a full well rounded like idea. Would you agree, Chris? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, is there anything in the combat that you noticed that you wanted to pick out? No, it doesn't. We don't have a lot to look at, right? So we're right. still kind of guessing. It did seem a little one-dimensional, uh, but maybe that's just because this just started. This is like the first level, it looks like, right. or an early on level. Right. And so maybe you don't have a lot of weapons yet. Maybe you don't have a lot of powers yet. Right. So I kind of thought it was funny that like you have these really cool vampire movements but then when you leave that you kind of just walk around like a normal human being i wish they had well i mean pre-alpha hopefully there's a lot more development but i hope that they make the characters non-fighting movements as kind of cool and vampiric as his fighting movements right yeah that you feel like you're a vampire 100 percent of the time that you're not just going into vampire mode when it's time to use your vampire powers or whatever um it's the uh Voice acting, by the way, you can't hear it, um, but it's really good. Yeah, right. the voice acting's good. The music's interesting. I mean, it's and the the facial animations are way better than Mass Effect Andromeda already, <laughs> right? I don't I don't know what happened with that game. The music was uh, very uh, atmospheric, right? Very. Uh, it's, it's what you would expect. Yeah, right? it, it kind of gave you a sense of loathing. Yeah, and, and darkness. A little creepy and. What do you think about the fact that you can buy this game right now for forty five dollars on Steam? Yeah, go on Steam right now. It's forty four ninety nine, uh, and we're not suggesting you do buy it because we got to see a lot more before we can make up our minds. Of course, I mean, there's a lot more footage that has to be shown. But yeah, this is really early, but it's crazy early because it's it's one thing for it's GameStop, to come out in November, right? It's one thing for like GameStop to say we'll accept pre-orders because we are it's way away yeah we're determining that they're going to sell it one day this is the company itself posting it on steam and selling it with dlc it comes out in bonuses and we're sitting here in june <laughs> so it's five months ahead of time yeah and th- that does seem long doesn't and it? it's pre-alpha footage five months ahead of time yeah that's interesting didn't I mean, think I'll, about I that i might pre-order a sequel <laughs> if you know the, once it's proven yeah the company has a good track record or i like what they've done in the previous ones yeah but i don't know about pre-ordering five months out for a new ip yeah so uh now we saw this footage sorry when we fast forward to where he goes to the um the priest so he was told earlier in the this footage by a woman that he should he needs to go confess his sins that he wants to and after killing this guy and drinking his blood he comes up to this uh, church, he knocks on the door. The priest is going to open up. There's going to be some. There's going to be an interesting story reveal here that kind of sets up what's going on with this character. Um, when the this demo first started, we were seeing a funeral. It turns out it was a little girl's funeral. It turns out it's 
this main character's little girl's funeral. And there's a choice here that you're going to see that you could reveal a big twist in the plot. Um, at least a twist from this demo. I mean, it might be that he killed the girl. He killed his own daughter. So uh, that's going to be interesting. Dun, dun. Yeah, dun, dun, dun. I think that's going to be, if they take that sort of thing seriously, that can be a very interesting um, story element that you're dealing with the guilt of, as a vampire, having killed your own daughter. Hopefully they don't cheapen it where it's like it was an accidental kill or it was like he just failed to stop her death or something like that. I mean, I would want him like maybe to get out of control as a vampire and do something terrible. That's an interesting story plot, don't you think, Chris? Yeah, but I mean, again, it's something that's been covered a lot of times in vampire stories. By Anne Rice. <laughs> 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 I, I think we'll stop that there. But, Chris, uh, just go ahead and go somewhere into the middle of the video uh, while we wrap this up. Uh, what do you think? Is this uh, something that you're going to look out for? I'm definitely going to play it. It's just okay. a matter of do I, you know, buy it ahead of time or when it comes out or when it's on Steam sale. So I'm going to admit up front an unreasonable like for this. This is making me feel the way I wanted Dishonored 2 yeah. to make me feel. Yeah, I'll give you that. And I bought Dishonored 2 and I played through it from beginning to end out of obligation for love of the series. But I enjoyed very little of it. <laughs> And I'm already enjoying just watching this demo. So I'm pretty excited. This might fill that little void, the Dishonored 2 void for me. Yeah. So well, I'm, I'm excited for it. I hope it's good. It's just, I hope they don't mess it up. You yeah. Know? It looks like what they're showing us looks really good. This is Don't Nod's big chance, right? They yeah. came out with Life is Strange. It was after a big flop. Remember Me was this gigantic commercial flop. It was supposed to be PlayStation exclusive, and it was so bad that PlayStation released it. <laughs> they said that we don't want this exclusive. And then it got like sixes and fives out of tens when it came out. And the, the, the studio was in trouble. They came out with Life is Strange, which was a much better, uh, more focused game. And now this is their chance to, yeah, ha I mean, to try the AAA space one more time. You got a great looking environment, got cool setup. It could be something really awesome. So. Yeah. So uh, we're going to continue to cover E3. Please check out our other videos. Please check out our other reviews. We're going to cover all the conferences. Just keep up with us. Like and subscribe if you would. And we're going to fill you with all kinds of E3 breaking news. You have a wonderful day.